Hi, Douglas Simonson here. Today I'm going to be painting a male nude. Not that unusual for me. What is unusual is today I'm going to be painting it in black and white. I've been drawing and painting the male figure for over 40 years. And almost from the very start, I was working for my own photographs. My first model was my then boyfriend, Ben. But not long after that, I got more professional and I started paying my models. Anyway, I've worked with a lot of models over the years. And one of my all-time favorites and one of the best is a guy named Mike T, who modeled for me in 2007. I first saw Mike dancing at a nightclub in Waikiki. And I gave him my card and said, call me if you want to model. He did, and we did a photo session not long after that at a secluded beach near Makapu'u on the island of Oahu. I got so many great shots from that session that I'm still working from them all these years later. And this shot from that session is the one that I'm going to be working from today. I'll be tweaking the photo in Photoshop like I usually do, but today I'm doing something a little different. First, I'm converting it to grayscale. I'll explain why in a minute. Then I'm doing my usual Photoshop tweak. Well, two tweaks, actually, to get the reference exactly the way I want it. I've already drawn the big shapes onto the canvas and then covered that with an acrylic wash. And now I'm starting to paint. I'm starting with the darkest darks, which in this case are blacks, and the lightest lights, which are pure titanium white. This is one of the reasons why I like painting in grayscale. You don't have to deal with color, so I can get more playful and just have more fun with the brushwork. Now I'm putting in a very light gray, and you may think this is just more white, but if you look closely, you'll see that it's slightly darker than the whites I've already put in. Now I've already said that painting in grayscale is easier because you don't have to deal with color, but you still have to deal with values. If you don't get the lights and the darks exactly right, it's not going to work. So you really have to pay attention to the values. So you've got your black, you've got your white, and you've mixed up maybe four or five shades of gray in between. And you think that you've got your shades of gray with the right amount of variation between them. But once you start putting them on the painting, you're probably going to discover that some are a little too light, some are a little too dark, and you're going to have to make adjustments as you go. This is normal. And learning to see these lights and darks in this way is an incredibly valuable skill that's going to help you in the future, whether you're painting in black and white or in color. Now I'm going back to dark and putting in a very dark gray for the second darkest dark, just a little lighter than black. And I'm punching up the whites a little bit, so now it's a lot easier to see the difference between the whites and that very light gray. Now I'm adding some of the medium tones. Keep in mind that even though it looks like I got it right the first time, I often didn't. This time-lapse video isn't showing you those places where I had to stop and remix a shade because it was a little too light or a little too dark to go with the areas around it. I want you to remember that so you know it doesn't mean you're not a good painter. It is normal to constantly have to make corrections. One of the reasons I like to tweak my photos in Photoshop is to get rid of the details so I can just focus on the big shapes. In a, an image like this, the background could be pretty detailed, but I hate painting that kind of detail. So for me, it's a big relief to just have these simple abstract shapes that I can copy and know that if I get them mostly right, it's going to end up looking like what it's supposed to look like. While I'm putting in the finishing touches, I want to say a word about mixing your grays. You can use a tube of black and a tube of white, but that's kind of boring. If you want to make your grays more interesting, consider using color complements. Here's a list of complementary colors you can use to mix some interesting grays. My favorite on this list, and the one I use the most, is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and some white, of course. But you should experiment a little and see what you like. And I'm done. The photo came from a session at a beach near Makapu'u, so I call it That Beach Near Makapu'u. And you can see it now on my website. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you got some useful tips watching me paint in grayscale. And it's something you should definitely try. It's fun, and you're going to learn some valuable skills. If you did enjoy today's video and you haven't already subscribed, please do. That inspires me to create more videos. And if you watched me paint and you got inspired, go put on your painting pants and go paint. <laughs> <laughs>